Hi, I'm Kendra, and I'm introducing this video about cigar box guitar tuners because, let's face it, you're sick of seeing my dad. I am too, and I totally get it. I mean, I live with the guy. Ugh. Alright, so to preface this, believe it or not, um, every summer my dad and I, we build a guitar, and it's for me. It's actually for me. For example, the first one we built was for this uh, English singer called Jake Bug. And if you don't know who he is, well, that's a problem. You need to go and find out because he's going to be the next Bob Dylan. I'm calling it right now. Um, we actually went to go see him live, and I took the guitar backstage with me, and he took it, and now it's in England, which is pretty rad. And then the next one we built was themed off of Joshua Tree because I adore Joshua Tree. It's an awesome little hippie town. Um, it's got all these matchbooks based off of our trip there. Um, it's it's based off of this groovy little place called the Integratron, which if you don't know where that is, you need to find that out too. Um, it's signed by the sisters of the man who opened the place. I won't go too much into detail on that, but that's a poster for the Joshua Tree National Park. And um, yeah pretty much in, in captures everything about Joshua Tree. That's right, you heard it here first, folks. I'm giving you an exclusive look. Behind the scenes, all you could ask for, all exclusive pass to my next guitar. Yes, themed off of England. And so here I have some stamps, and a pin, and a coin, and like a poster, and some matchbooks, and all that groovy stuff you need to build a guitar. When I was originally planning this guitar and I was I was thinking, man, what kind of box am I going to use? And then I was like, oh, it's so fitting. What other box am I going to use? It's got to be a Camacho Churchill, right? Right? Right, so now that that's sorted, we're going to take this neck and this box and we're going to create with a million tools that my dad bought, but he never said he'd use, until now, my England themed guitar. Alright, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. I don't know how or why you'd want to, but if you do, the subscribe button is in the middle, and then the buttons to uh, go to his playlists are on the sides. Again, I don't know why you'd want to, but it's there if you want to. And since this is my episode, I get to do the musical shout-out. So I did mention Jake Bug before. There's going to be an iCard popping up. You need to check him out if you don't already know who he is. He's a singer-songwriter from Nottingham, England. And he, he sounds just like Bob Dylan, what else can I say? So now let's go listen to my dad drone on about tuners. Alright guys, wasn't that uh, the most special introduction to episode you've ever seen? That's my kid, that's the one that's named after my wife and I. So that's what you get when you name your kid after you. Anyway, we're at a point right now where we're building her guitar for the summer of 2018. She's going to enter it in some kind of contest. And we're at a point where we're going to be uh, putting the graphic and the tuners and everything and finishing up the headstock. Uh, this is a Fender type uh, style or pattern or whatever you want to call it. And as she mentioned, she got some postage stamps from England. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this over that that's going to turn out kind of cool and then the whole thing is English theme so let's talk a little bit about tuners while we're doing this let's take a quick look at installing uh, both this type and this type because they're virtually the same okay I've got a piece of a fingerboard cut off here I've drilled uh, two holes one for each of these and this hole is just big enough for the tuner to go into. You want it to be really tight so it doesn't wobble around. So that's the first hole. Both of these tuners use the same size hole, like so. I want you to notice that the shaft of the tuner fits in the hole, but the keeper, the retainer that goes on the top side does not. So we're going to drill a little bit bigger hole 
uh, that's about that deep, the space right here, so the retainer will drop down from the top of the fingerboard. All right, now you want to remember I don't have to go very deep because this retainer is only like so, and all I have to do is go deep enough where that'll press in like so, and then of course the tuner comes in like that. Uh, I do this, I put this all together after my graphic is on and all that, but and then you press that down. I always put a little tad bit of glue right there to hold that all together. And then, of course, on the back, I'll line everything up, I drill pilot holes for these screws, and then use these very small screws here. All right, now on this, this type of tuner here, um, you'll notice the bit is much larger um, than the uh, bits needed to drill for the holes for the other tuner. Uh, in comparison, this is the main hole uh, for this type of tuner where the other two had this a smaller bit and then we had uh, this larger one for the uh, keeper but this takes a much larger bit and with this type of tuner you're not drilling two different size holes one all the way through and then one uh, f for this keeper now this tuner has the keeper is actually threaded on the outside of its barrel and the body of the tuner is actually threaded on the inside. It has this washer so when I put the tuner up through the hole and again this would be a headstock and push this in like so it's a snug fit I just simply put the washer over make sure that the keeper fits down in the washer and then I'm going to snug this up like so and we want to remember that the headstock is usually much thicker but this is a very strong a durable tuner that again this is replaceable uh, the shaft inside of here in this tuner knob actually have a slotted flatted part so um, they don't twist off and and break off and crack like some of these pressed ons might after a while so there's only one hole here uh, where there's two here let's talk a little bit about weight now what do these things weigh what's the difference in weight all right, I want to talk to you about three different kinds of tuners that I've used and kind of my progression, and we'll talk about uh, a little bit about each one. I think we all know this one and are familiar with it. It uh, has an exposed gear. Um, you uh, tune this by turning this knob. This knob is pressed on, and um, this goes up through the headstock. Uh, it's got a retainer that fits in on the top of the headstock. Um, now you always want to remember, it took me a while to figure this out, but the gear always goes down. Why does the gear go down? Well, because the gear is attached to the post, and when it's down, it actually will pull the way the string is pulling. It will pull back this way and actually pull itself onto this part right here where the threads are. If it's the other way, when the string pulls, it can actually separate these two. They get loose and then it pops and, and doesn't do anything when you try to tune it. But we, I think most of us started out and use a lot of these. Now this one, is a, it, everything is closed. The gear is closed. But in terms of function, it's kind of almost like this one. It also has a retainer, so when you drill your hole, um, it slips down like this on the other side of the headstock. But again, you always want the gear down on this one. Uh, like this one here, the tuner knob is pressed on, so there's no way to take it on and off. Um, at first sight, this one appears to be sturdier than this one. 
And then finally, there's this type. This type, uh, at first appearance, seems to be much heavier made uh, than the other two. Um, this one calls for a little bit bigger hole that you would drill. And rather than having uh, one of these retainers that just slips down into the headstock, this retainer actually threads down into the tuner and uh, this washer here actually is what keeps everything uh, together. So you drill your hole, you slip this up through the headstock, then you put the washer on and uh, then turn this down until it's tight. It, unlike the other ones, only has one screw hole where these each have two. And this one has something different when it comes to the knob. The knob, you see that uh, Phillips head screw, the knob actually comes off of these and there's a flat spot inside of here where it rides a shaft. So there's virtually no way that this one can strip out. So which one of these do you think is actually gonna weigh the most? Uh, are one with the pressed on plastic knob, old reliable, this bit fancier vintage looking one, or this one that seems to be very more advanced. Now I've set the, the little scale here to gram so everybody in the world can make sense of about what I'm, I've, I'm about to do. And I've set it to zero. Again, we have the tuner and the keeper. And this one comes in at 17.3. This one, tuner and keeper, 21. So about four grams more. Ooh, now we're at 33.6. So this one is notably heavier. Is this going to cause you to have head uh, dive on especially light boxes? Not so much. Uh, there, this one's about, uh, I wouldn't say twice, but almost. Um, so the weight difference is negligible. So with ease of installation, uh, this is one hole. These are two. If you're doing it with a drill press and you're being careful, there's really that not much difference. You're, you're saving one screw hole on that uh, to drill. Um, of course, working with bigger bits on smaller wood, you got to be uh, careful because one wrong move and you'll have a ruined headstock. But all in all, the effort's about the same. The weight isn't that much difference. So okay, guys. Now we're going to talk about cost. Now, we've looked at a lot of different things. We've looked at configuration. We've looked at this is open. This is closed. Uh, this seems to be the heaviest one. And if you looked at buying these uh, to put on your guitars, and let's say you're selling the guitars and you're at a price point of, say, $200 for your guitar, you're trying to keep it economical. Uh, if you're buying your necks, if you're buying your pickups, that stuff adds up quickly and your time is your time. So you're trying to save money on parts. I get that. So what I did was I got on the internet and I bought the each of this type of tuner from a, a supplier that sells cigar box guitar parts. So I didn't try to source these out and buy 500 units from China or something like that. I just went to my normal suppliers and said, if I buy four of these, so that's a typical setup, a four string guitar. I might buy two rights, two lefts, uh, four lefts, depending on what my headstock looks like. But that was the criteria. So we're gonna buy four and we're gonna see what the unit price for each is. So let's play a little shell game here. This one, uh, in, in terms of vulnerability, uh, if you drop this, this is likely to crack. Um, after a while, this may work loose. This is open to the elements, um, whatever the elements are where you're playing. Um, if you put this on the wrong way, this can bend and then this doesn't work. Or There's a number of things that can go wrong here. This seems to be, uh, number one in weight, the lightest. So you might think that this one is the cheapest. 
Next up is this one's a little bit heavier. It's kind of the same configuration. It's just covered and protected. So it has its benefits, I guess. Uh, but again, both of these have uh, tuner knobs that could break off or, or come loose or whatever, and they can't be replaced. But again, this one's a little bit heavier. It's more protected. So you might be led to believe that it's probably the median priced one. And then this one is pretty fancy. It's got a good a knob, a replacement, uh, the flat drive in here that, that stops this from slipping. Uh, this is machined. Uh, and so if you were to price these, you might be thinking this is probably the most economical. This is the mid-range price. And this probably has the highest price. Well, guess what? We all been fooled. This one, the one that we might have thought was the most expensive one, is actually the cheapest one. This one's the middle uh, <laughs> priced one. And this one over here was actually the highest priced one. So how did that happen? Well, buying four of these, the price uh, is $6.99 for four, and then there's $3.49 shipping, making the unit price on this one $2.62. Now, if you were to buy more of these in a higher volume, then the shipping price would go down per unit. So it would become more comparable to this one here that when you buy four of these, it's $9.97 and there's free shipping, which makes this one $2.49. So you got a 13 cent difference between these two. But the shocker here is this one, the big heavy one, the one that seems to be machined, well-made, and has some benefits in the tuner knob. These are actually in the chrome, $1.75 each. Uh, you can also buy these uh, these two in, in different colors or this one in different colors. Uh, the color variances raise these by 25 cents each. But even with the color variance, this one comes in at 175 or $2 each. And there's free shipping from this company. So that's quite the shocker. Okay, one last thing I want to talk to you guys about is scale or dimension is kind of the better word if you've got remember my first guitar the c6 steve guitar it had this type of tuner now the neck is thin there's not much space here uh, some people prefer this width of neck a uh, one board the same board as the neck for the headstock the same width at least so uh, either this tuner or this tuner would work but when you start putting this one in not only does the whole size uh, uh, start eating up a lot of wood but it's also pretty big in scale so think that one out um, when it comes to let me get another guitar in here when it comes to say this one uh, this one fits the scale better but of course either one of these would work just as well. So consider scale and how it's going to look in the end. So when it all boils down, which one do I like? I like this one. In fact, the guitars that I've uh, brought in for tune-ups that have had the original tuners on them, the open gear tuners, I've used these. Remember, pick whichever one you want, whichever one makes sense for you, whichever one is most economical. If you're building these things in mass, it's best to get the best price you can, but I like these vintage style tuners. Okay, thanks for watching this episode. I look for ones in the future. And remember, uh, subscribe, playlist, and send me an email. That's coming up here in a second. See ya.